The Aegis Scratch Removal System Kit 1800 allows users to remove scratches and surface damage from windshields, windows, tabletops, tempered glass, and architectural glass, either curved or flat. It also allows you to remove graffiti from glass surfaces. Your Aegis Scratch Removal System includes everything you need to make top quality repairs. It contains an A35 aluminum oxide green disc that removes deep scratches and defects. The green disc is used when a scratch is deep enough to hook a fingernail. An A10 aluminum oxide blue disc. The blue disc removes shallow scratches, scuffs and acid marks and refines any scratches left after the green disc. An A5 aluminum oxide orange disc. The orange disc removes defective coatings and refines any scratches left after the blue disc. These three discs are only used for non-windshield scratch removal. Your kit also contains a CEO cerium oxide white disc. The white disc removes windshield scratches and avoids distortion. It also polishes and leaves the glass crystal clear. An electric multi-speed polisher. A general purpose backup pad to be used on all glass surfaces. Vinyl gloves to protect your hands from chemicals. Ear protection and safety glasses. During the actual scratch removal process, always wear appropriate safety gear at all times. Gloves, safety glasses, and ear protection. You'll also receive a wax pencil to mark the scratch on the inside of the windshield. A hood and fender cover to protect your customer's vehicle from repair splatter and tool damage. Masking tape. Glass cleaner. A water bottle. A Velcro backup pad for final polishing. A white sponge, also for final polishing. Premixed cerium oxide glass polishing compound. Paper towels and an apron. The Aegis Scratch Removal System can remove scratches on windshields that are installed in cars as well as on uninstalled windshields. The essential procedure on both configurations is the same but the uninstalled windshield should rest securely on a windshield cradle at a comfortable working height. Before beginning any job on an installed windshield, take a few moments to inspect the vehicle. It's a good idea to use a routine, such as beginning the inspection at the same location on each vehicle to ensure a consistent and thorough inspection each time. Make a note of any damage on your repair order and make sure the customer is aware of any existing damage ahead of time. This may eliminate misunderstandings later. Also, take this opportunity to explain the scratch removal process to the customer in order to establish his or her expectations for the results. If the scratch is located in the so-called acute area of the windshield, inform the customer that a repair might not be advisable. The acute area is a rectangle about 11 inches wide and eight and a half inches high, located above the steering wheel, straight in the driver's line of vision. Some states have special regulations governing repairs in the acute area. It is important to keep your tools and work area clean. When the polisher is not in use, place it on its back so it doesn't pick up dirt from the working surface. Also, wipe debris off the polisher frequently, paying special attention to the backup pad, the polisher shaft, and the casing. And keep your storage box closed at all times to avoid contamination. Begin your repair by inspecting the scratch. If the damage is so deep that your fingernail can easily hook the scratch, you are at the limit of removability. The length of the scratch will affect the time it takes to complete the repair. If you determine that the scratch will require extra time or is not removable, you'll need to inform the customer regarding additional cost. When you have determined that the scratch can be removed, prepare the windshield. Clean the scratched area with glass cleaner and paper towel. Circle the scratch on the inside of the glass with a wax pencil. Then use masking tape and paper towels to make a dam that extends six inches around each side of the scratch. Be sure the electric polisher is unplugged before you start working with it. Lock the work spindle with the locking push button. Never press the locking push button while the work spindle is rotating. And always let it come to a full stop. Hand tighten the backup pad while holding the push button with the other hand. 
After tightening, make sure that the backup pad can rotate freely by turning the disc clockwise by hand. Wipe the face of the backup pad to be sure that it is both clean and dry. Next, take one CEO white disc from the storage box and remove the backing to expose the adhesive. Press the disc firmly in place to ensure good adhesion to the backup pad. Be sure to close the lid on the storage box before you start working. Set the polisher at a speed of 2200 RPM, setting number 3. Spray the work area with water to lubricate the glass. Then gently contact the surface of the glass with firm, even pressure. Tilt the pad until one half to one third is in contact with the surface. Don't tilt too much or the pad will become hot and wear unevenly. Long, overlapping strokes in the direction of the scratch are the most efficient technique for removing a scratch. Don't dwell in one area for a length of time. As you work with the polisher, a very light white slurry will form on the glass. Check the temperature of the glass after five or six passes of the polisher. If it is becoming hot, lift the pad off the glass. Regularly add one or two squirts of water for each six inches of scratch to maintain a cool work area. It's very important that you avoid generating too much heat. During the scratch removal process, the temperature of the glass should not exceed that of warm bath water. Test the temperature regularly with your hand and if the glass is hot to the touch, apply more water. Continue this process for about five minutes. Prior to switching discs, clean the entire work area with glass cleaner and wipe the glass dry with a clean paper towel. This is necessary to remove any cerium oxide or tiny glass particles. Any particles left on the disc or on the glass could cause micro scratches that will only become visible after the final polishing step. Examining the damaged area with the beam of a flashlight hitting the glass at different angles will help you locate any remaining parts of the scratch. When changing discs, be sure to place the polisher on a solid surface with the pad facing up. That way you will avoid contaminating the pad. If the backup pad is wet, replace it with a dry one. Then change the polishing disc and close the lid on the storage box. Continue to polish the remaining scratch. Changing discs is necessary. Each disc will last up to 10 minutes. Regularly inspect the glass until the scratch has disappeared. When the scratch is bottomed out, clean the glass using your glass cleaner and a paper towel. You will now move to the final polishing step. Remove the general purpose backup pad and thread the blue Velcro backup pad onto the shaft of the polisher. Attach the sponge to the Velcro backup pad, then apply a dab of polishing compound to the sponge. Before you start the polisher, press the sponge firmly against the glass and move it around the work area to distribute the polishing compound. Start the polisher on setting number 3, 2200 RPM. As you start polishing, a light film will develop on the glass. Continue circling the work area until the film dries. Clean the surface with a paper towel and inspect the repaired area carefully. If you used proper scratch removal techniques on a repairable windshield, the glass should show no evidence that a scratch was ever present. After you have determined that the scratch is completely removed, you can remove the paper towels and tape from the windshield. Then clean the outside and the inside of the glass, removing all pencil marks. If the windshield is coated with a hydrophobic coating, the repaired area will have to be recoated. However, it is recommended that the entire windshield be recoated to make the coating uniform. The Aegis scratch removal system is also effective for removing damage to non-windshield glass. The process begins by preparing the glass surface. First, thoroughly clean the entire glass surface with glass cleaner and paper towels. Using masking tape and paper towels, make a dam that extends six inches on each side of the scratch. For this demonstration, we did not use the tape and paper towels. Next, determine the severity of the scratch. If the scratch is deep enough to hook a fingernail, start with the A35 green disc. For shallower scratches, scuffs, or acid marks, 
you may be able to start with a finer A10 blue disc. For this demonstration, we'll start with the green disc. Attach the general purpose backup pad to the electric polisher. Then wipe the face of the backup pad so that it's clean and dry. Remove the disc from its storage box and remove the backing to expose the adhesive. Press the disc firmly in place, ensuring good adhesion to the backup pad. The discs will not stick well if the backup pad is wet. Close the storage box lid to avoid contaminating the remaining discs. Apply water to the work surface. With the polisher running at approximately 1800 RPM, speed number two, gently touch the surface, applying even pressure. Tilt the pad until one half to one third of the pad is touching the surface. Don't tilt more or you'll generate too much heat, which could cause the pad to wear unevenly. Move the pad over the surface in small circular overlapping strokes. Don't dwell too long in any one area or too much glass will be removed and the surface will become distorted. Check the glass temperature after five or six passes of the polisher. The correct working temperature is similar to warm bath water. If you have to pull back your hand, the glass is too hot. Add two to four squirts of water per six inches of scratch and polish the glass until the temperature is maintained. Do not let the glass become dry. Apply water liberally. Remember, if the glass gets hot, lift the pad off the glass. Cool the surface by adding more water and fanning the glass with the pad rotating one to two inches above the surface. Wipe residue from the glass using glass cleaner and paper towels. Then inspect the glass to see if the scratch has disappeared or bottomed out. Next, we'll refine the scratch. After the glass has been cleaned, repeat the scratch removal procedure, but using a finer grade disc. If you started out with the A35 green disc, the refining will be done with the A10 blue disc. If you did the removal with the A10 blue disc, the refining is done with the A5 orange disc. Remember to overlap your previous work areas slightly, gently scouring the surface with the polisher in a regular circular motion, using the feathering technique shown in your instruction manual. When the scratches from the previous grade have been refined, wipe the surface clean and inspect the glass. The damaged area should have a cloudy appearance and no deeper scratches should remain. If that's not the case, additional refining is required. After the glass has been cleaned, repeat the procedure using the A5 orange disc. Remember to overlap your previous work areas slightly, gently scouring the surface with the polisher in a regular circular motion. Next, the glass is polished. Cleanliness is of the utmost importance in this final polishing step. Thoroughly clean the glass surface with water and paper towels. Use glass cleaner to make sure that all dust and stray particles have been removed. Always use a new backup pad for the final polishing step so you don't create any new scratches. Clean off any residue that might have accumulated on the polisher, paying special attention to the areas around the shaft, the casing, and the backup pad. Apply a small amount of water to the glass surface. With the polisher running at 1800 RPM, Setting number two, bring the pad down flat onto the surface. Start polishing with the pad flat in a circular motion, working from the outside to the inside. Do not leave the fringes to be polished last. It is important that you maintain firm pressure on the polisher against the glass. Otherwise, the polisher might jerk on the glass and produce swirl marks. After a few seconds of polishing, a milky slurry will form. Continue polishing until this slurry is dry. Add more water and continue polishing until the slurry is dry again. Repeat this process two to three times until the glass is visually clear. You may need to replace discs once or twice during this step. Remove all residue that remains on the last pass by polishing the glass dry. Lift the polisher off the glass near the edge to minimize the risk of scratching caused by residue being redeposited on the surface. In the next step, the glass is polished with the sponge and cerium oxide. 
Clean the glass with glass cleaner. Thread the blue Velcro backup pad onto the polisher and attach a white sponge to the pad. Then apply a dab of polishing compound to the sponge. Press the sponge firmly against the glass and start the polisher using setting number 3, 2200 RPM. A light film will develop. Continue to circle the area until this film dries. Wipe the surface clean and inspect it carefully. The glass should now be scratch free and crystal clear. If not, repeat the final scratch removal and polishing steps as necessary. Depending on the type of glass and type of damage you are repairing, there may be some distortion present following repair. As you gain experience with the Aegis scratch removal system, you will become skilled at removing scratches, scuffs and damage from both windshield and non-automotive glass. For additional information, contact Aegis Tools International at 1-888-247-6000. International customers should call 608-828-3660.